our Father and our God, we are grateful and thankful uh, that you can and you will hold us. Uh, not in the future, but now. Your keeping power is evident because we are able to be here in this moment for worship. We've offered up our worship through song. We've offered up our worship through reading of the scripture, through a homily of sorts for the bereaved, through our Sabbath school experience, through uh, giving, and now as we offer up ourselves through in worship through the preached word, we ask that the same spirit that attended each one of those elements would attend this one as well. We're asking that you would speak because your children are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to share a message with you uh, this morning or this afternoon using the title, If This Is You. If this is you, weekend after weekend, on Saturdays for us and on Sunday for others, people around the world gather online or gather in their churches for worship. The sermon is the central focus of most worship services. I remember being, being amazed weekend after weekend, uh, hearing the things that the preacher would say from the Word of God. It seemed that at times the pastor was talking directly to me. I was being blessed. I was growing. I couldn't get enough of hearing the Word preached. However, I quickly realized that not everyone felt the same way. We all hear the same message, yet our responses are different. This is because hearing and listening are not the same thing. Hearing is physical. Listening is mental. The physical act of hearing involves the vibration of hair follicles caused by sound waves that enter the ear. On the other hand, the act of listening happens when the nerves in the ear interpret these or those sound waves and sends a message to the brain. Those who are physically able to, they hear. They always hear some type of sound. However, not all who hear listen. Listening brings understanding. In our world today, the good news of the gospel is preached for all to hear. In our world today, the good news of the gospel is preached for all to hear. When uh, we turn on our televisions, it's there. We turn on the radio, it's there. Uh, the gospel is preached online and in churches, uh, on street corners and in prisons, in jungles and in deserts. The gospel is preached on mountaintops and in valleys, in living rooms and bedrooms, in storefront churches and in great cathedrals, in doctor's offices and on truck stops, in, 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 in the big city and even here in the River City. The good news is being preached for all to hear. However, what I have come to understand is that how each person hears um, and how, how each hearer responds to what is heard is different, watch this, based on their circumstances. The circumstances of everyone who has heard who is hearing and who will hear the word of God, as well as their responses to hearing the word of God, are presented in the parable of the sower, which is found in Matthew chapter 13. In this parable, the parable in Matthew chapter 13, listen to me now, Jesus gives four examples of people who hear the word of God, people who are believers or, or people who might want to become believers. From these four examples, every Christian must learn that only, listen to me, that only hearing the word of God is not enough. 
The believer must hear and understand the gospel and respond appropriately to it or they will be lost. Hear the gospel, understand the gospel, respond to the gospel. Here's the parable. Here's the parable. Read it in our scripture reading, Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 1 again, going down to verse 9. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. A great multitude were gathered to him so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a soul went out to sow, and, he, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside. And birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground. Somebody say amen for good ground. And they yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, uh, some 60, some 30. He who has an ear, let him hear. After, after Jesus shares this parable, his disciples, they come to him privately, and they ask him the meaning of the parable. What, what is the meaning of the parable of the sowers? Jesus responds, his response is found in verses 18 through 23, right? So um, Matthew 13, chapter uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 18. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes, watch this, and snatches away what is sown in his heart. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom, listen to the parable, Jesus says, and does not understand it. Then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. This is the wayside hearer. The word of God goes forth. The person who hears it does not understand it. The Bible says, then, in the King James Version, cometh the devil. <laughs> I like that. Not that the devil comes, but I just like how it sounds. The, this, is the, this, is, this is he who receives seed by the wayside. The wicked one comes and snatches it away. The seed sown by the wayside represents the word of God as it falls upon the heart, watch this, of the inattentive hearer. This hearer, this, this hearer um, hears but does not understand, doesn't listen. Like a, like a worn path in the grass, the servant of the Lord says, this hearer's heart becomes a highway for the world's traffic. Its pleasures and its sin. This hearer's soul is hardened through deceitfulness of sin. If this is you, your ability to understand spiritual things is paralyzed. Uh, you hear the word of God, but you're not listening to the word of God, so you don't understand the word of God. If this is you, you don't understand that the word preached applies to you. You don't realize your need and your danger. If this is you, uh, you don't recognize the love of Christ, and, and you pass by the message of God's grace as something that does not concern you. If this is you, if you fit this description, say, Satan is represented as, as the bird in the text. And, and he's snatching the word out of your heart even as I speak. Why? Because he doesn't want you to repent. He doesn't want you to hear and listen and repent. How does he do it? He causes you to criticize, to doubt, or to not believe. Uh, some who are hearing today and other times, the preacher's choice of words, his mannerisms, um, they may not please you. Uh, you, um, uh, you dwell on the defects. Thus, the truth you need, which God has graciously sent you, makes no lasting impression. You miss 
your blessing because of fault finding with the messenger. If this is you, pray right now for the power of the Holy Ghost to free you because you do not understand how deceitful sin is. Pray for God to help you to grow uh, from every message that's preached, no matter who the preacher is. Pray that you will hear and understand the word of God. This is the wayside hearer. Verse 20, Matthew chapter 13. But he who receives seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet, verse 21 says, he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Maybe someone here today identifies with the stony ground hearer. This hearer hears and understands, but watch, watch this, but, but, but watch this. <laughs> the understanding is limited. There's no root. The seed is sown upon the stony ground. The, the seed that is sown upon the stony ground it can't be planted in deep soil. Amen? Uh, so the plant just grows up quickly, but since the roots can't penetrate the rock that's underneath the soil, it can't find nutrients to sustain growth, and it soon dies. Like the rock under the top soil, watch this, the heart of this hearer is underlined by selfishness. Yet self is not put in check. If this is you, you don't feel guilty when you sin, yet you appear to be a convert to the truth. Uh, you look like a Christian. You talk like a Christian. Um, you, 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 you receive, uh, um, um, you, you, you sing like a Christian, yet you're not converted. If this is you, you receive the word immediately, yet you don't count the cost. If this is you, you don't consider what the word of God requires of you. You don't consider what the word of God requires of you. If this is you, you don't allow confrontation between, watch this, the word and all your worldly habits. You missed that. And you don't surrender yourself fully to God's control. If this is you, you don't allow your spiritual life to be nourished by Christ. You rely on self. If this is you, you rejoice in the momentary freedom you find in Jesus at worship when the praise team is singing. Uh, yet when the word disrupts what you want or points out sin in your life, you consider the word an inconvenience. For you, getting rid of sin is inconvenient. You believe it would cost you too much to make a radical change. If this is you, watch this. Present comfort is more important than eternal reward. If this is you, love for God is the only way out. Love, love demands sacrifice, sacrifice of self. If this is you, self has to die. This is the stony ground hearer. Matthew chapter 13, verse 22. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and, and, and the cares of this, this, this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word of God and he becomes unfruitful. I'm going to read it again. Now he who received seed among the thorns, watch this, is he who hears the word of God, but... Or it says, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. He receives the word of God. He receives the word of God. One um, old Webster's dictionary defines grace as, watch this, favorable influence of God, dif divine influence or the influence of the spirit, watch this, in renewing the heart and restraining from sin. Yet, 
this type of grace cannot work in the heart that is not reformed. The thorny ground hearer hears and understands, watch this, but has not put away old habits and practices of the former life. If this is you, the cares of this world hold you prisoner. Uh, you are choked by the cares of this world. You are swayed by the deceitfulness of riches. For you, the love of money is the root of all evil. If this is you, work consumes your life and you have no time to be spiritual. Thus, when worship service and the preacher are uninteresting and non-stimulating, watch this, you leave the church empty. You leave the church wanting because you came to receive, but you had nothing to give. If this is you, Christ is being choked out of your heart. If this is you, you find yourself working all the time so that you can get things done. A church attendance becomes inconvenience. You find yourself overly concerned with keeping up with the Joneses. If this is you, uh, you are anxious about everything. If this is you, uh, the size of your house matters. The type of car you drive consumes you. The cares of this world, uh, the deceitfulness of riches distracts you from spiritual things. Being a Christian in this world becomes an inconvenience. The word thus becomes choked out. If this is you, you understand the word of God, but there is so much to do in this life that you don't have time to prepare for eternal life. I'm resisting stopping at each one of these. Y'all know that, don't you? <laughs> Matthew 13, 23. Matthew 13, 23, but he who receives seed on the good ground, amen, somebody say good ground, is he who hears the word, watch this, and understands the word, who indeed bears and produces fruit, hallelujah, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. It's not in my notes, but I need to tell you, see, everybody doesn't have the same amount of fruit, so don't compare yourself with somebody else, Amen. amen. As uh, long as they're producing fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. A small tree can produce fruit and a big tree can produce fruit. Amen? Amen. How many of you know that an apple is fruit and so is a, a nut on a tree fruit? Amen? Amen? Yeah, it is. One's bigger than the other, but it's still fruit. Coconut's fruit and a little teeny thing is fruit. The ones that squirrels eat. Amen? <laughs> Just as long as it's producing fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixty. Some 30. The honest and good heart of which the parable speaks is not a heart without sin, y'all. Are y'all listening? This, this good soil, this, this honest and good heart, this, this, this good soil is not a heart without sin. Jesus has, he said, I came not to call the righteous to repentance, but the sinner. The folk who are the good soil Sinners in need of Christ, nonetheless. They're not people who never messed up. They're just open to responding appropriately to what they have heard. If this is you, you yield your heart of sin to the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you confess your guilt and feel your need of mercy and, and the love of God. Hallelujah. If this is you, you have a sincere desire to know truth, amen, that you may obey it. Not to win an argument, but to obey it. Amen. You, all of us in here win an argument about the Sabbath, but do we obey it? <laughs> if this is you, <laughs> uh, you have faith in the word. The Bible declares without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Come on, somebody diligently seek the Lord. If this is you, you understand the word of God and you respond to the word of God appropriately. Now, let me, let me tell you something. Listen, listen. Understanding God's word does not depend on intelligence, but rather on a desire for things eternal and simple faith in what God has promised. Y'all missed that. Are y'all listening to me? Understanding the word of God does not depend 
on intelligence. It depends on desire to learn, to know. Amen. How, how many of you know that there are some ladies who are not with the most handsome guy who was in high school or college, but she's, she's with the one who desired her the most? Hallelujah. Is a, am, am I right? <laughs> Somebody out there was loud on this side. That was you, Renee. <laughs> if this is you, if you are the, the good soil, if this is you, you obey with pleasure. If this is you, you are not exempt from difficulty and trial, but when affliction comes, you don't become restless, distrustful, or hopeless. You, you, you are strengthened through the trial, and, and, and as you go through the trial, you produce fruit, some 100-fold, some 60-fold, some 30-fold. One commentary I read, it said, you know, the, the seed falls on the ground and it falls in the soil, and, and it's nourished, of course, by the soil. It's nourished by uh, the water, but it's also nourished and strengthened by the sun. But, but heat represents persecution, and, and we grow through persecution. The problem is if, if, if the seed falls on soil that has no, or, 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 and it doesn't have any root, the sun scorches it. But if it has root, the sun doesn't bother it, the sun nurtures it. So when you have root, persecution will grow you. <laughs> if this is you, you've learned to put your trust in the Lord and not to lean on your own, your own understanding. If this is you, you know that um, you are troubled on every side, uh, yet you are not distressed. You are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You're supposed to say hallelujah right there. That's what I wrote in my notes. You're supposed to say amen. <laughs> if this is you, uh, you know that Jesus has promised to supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. If this is you, you are persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. If this is you, you know that you're more than conquerors through him who loved you. And if this is you, you know that, 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 um, that he shall come, that he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. But here's what you need to know today. <laughs> here's what you need to know. In, in this chapter, in chapter 13, in between the parable and, and the explanation, Jesus' disciples come to him and they ask him, why does he teach in parables? <laughs> Why are, you, why are you speaking the way you speak? His explanation is simple. Here's, here's what his, his, it's because the hearts of the people had grown dull to the things of God. Hear me, what, hear, hear me, hear me, hear me. A lot of people who come to church, you want to hear the exciting, um, fanciful delivery of the sermons because it makes you feel good, but it has no depth. Could it be, now I'm, I'm asking a question, I'm not suggesting, I'm asking, could it be that we like all the, the bells and whistles in a presentation because our hearts have grown hard. If there's a straight word, it's a clear word. Pastor, pastor, ask me what I'm going to preach. No, no, pastor, i got to ask me. No, what, you know how to do it. Uh, sin. 
No, what am I say? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> he, he, okay, he, was, he wasn't thinking. He wasn't with me. <laughs> yeah, listen, but we had that as our joke. When they say, what you preaching about? I say, sin. They say, what are you going to say? Don't do it. <laughs> That's str- Listen, it's, it's funny and it's comical, but listen to what I'm saying. That's what, that's the word of God. I want you to walk through scripture from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament. At the end of the day, the word of God is sin has messed us up, put us out of relationship with God. God trying to get us back into relationship. So don't sin because sin has broken the relationship. That's the gospel. Jesus has come to save us from our sins. You're going to hear it for the, from now all the way through Christmas. Isn't that what the Christmas season is about? The Christmas season is about the advent of Christ, the coming of Christ to save his people from their sins. What I'm simply saying is, in between the two, the parable itself and the explanation, the disciples say, Jesus, why are you talking to them in parables? Why don't you tell them the straight thing? Because their hearts have grown dull. Don't tell me to stop sinning. Tell me in a different way. Make it so I can, make it palatable. He taught in parables to penetrate the dullness of the minds and hearts of the hearers in hopes of creating a capacity to receive more truth. Are you with me? I got to speak this way. I got to mash up the peas and the Brussels sprouts and the carrots because the little fella can't eat a whole, he has no teeth, can't digest it. So we got to give him the baby food. Jesus is giving them, let me give them something that they can digest. Why, why would people who've been in church 15 and 20 years need baby food? If, if y'all saw me in the fellowship hall at fellowship dinner eating Gerber's, y'all would have a problem with that. Pa- something's wrong with pastor. He only eats baby food. Got a bottle in my mouth. That would be, anybody here knows that would be a problem. I would need to go to Marcus and Ben. Why do, why do Christians who have supposedly matured in Christ want baby food? Here, here's what a commentary says. The seed, the, the, listen, listen. The, so so the, the, they want to penetrate the dullness of the mind and hearts and hope of creating a capacity to receive more truth. This, in fact, the seed is God's word. Amen, you knew that. The various soils represents different kinds of hearts. You knew that. Watch this. And the varied results show the different responses to the word of God. The reason why some fail to produce fruit is found not in the sower or the seed, but in the soil. There's nothing wrong with the seed. Nothing wrong with the sower. When I was in, um, I, had, I had the privilege of being in Mississippi, the Mississippi Delta. The Mississippi Delta has some of the richest farming soil in the world. They have topsoil that's, that's, that's rich. When I'm, I'm spreading out, so I'll show you how deep it is, like three feet. It's, it's just rich topsoil. It is, it is gold. Are you listening to me? As far as the eye could see to each direction is nothing but cotton, soybean, and corn everywhere. And the folk who farm there make money. The soil is so good that I even had, I had crops a hundredfold ha, in my backyard. Yeah, I did. I could show you pictures. I, listen, put, I went out there, just dropped it down and walked away. Boom. Because it was good ground. I went to Decatur, Alabama. They got farms there, too. Now, the farmers are doing what they do, but I'm in, I don't know nothing about farming. I'm inexperienced. So I went to, I, I, I did it in Mississippi. I can do it in Decatur. 
I dropped them seeds and nothing happened. <laughs> Different kind of soil. In Alabama, it's red clay. In Mississippi, it's dark, rich dirt. Good stuff. No, nothing, grew, nothing grew there. Something grew the other place. The soil made the difference. When, it doesn't, listen, I was talking about the exciting preacher, but listen to what I'm about to say. It doesn't matter who's preaching. If they're preaching the word, the seed is good. Are you listening? It's the hearer. It's the heart that makes the difference. When the word comes in, if you're one of the three first soils, as a matter of fact, think about this. In this parable, Jesus sows seed in four types of soil. Three-fourths of them don't bring forth fruit. Three-fourths don't bring forth fruit. Simple question. Are you comfortable with the condition of your heart? It, it's my challenge, my purpose, every single week to move us further and further to the, to the image of Christ. Not through my own strength, through the power of the Holy Spirit. The text says, the text says, um, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 29, that the purpose, the whole purpose, the whole intention of God uh, is to conform us to the image of his son. It says we, be, we were predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Are y'all listening to me? That's, that's the goal. That's the, conform us to the image of Jesus. Anybody conformed to the image of Jesus will be saved. As, as a vessel of God, it's my hope that every single time I stand in this desk, I help to, 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 to move people closer to that image. Amen? And, and so my question is, are you comfortable with the condition of your heart? Because the heart, amen, the heart reveals a whole bunch about who we are. Steps to Christ, page 62 says this. this. This is a promise in scripture to help you out. Watch this. If you're not comfortable with your heart, I need you to hear this. Amen? If you give yourself to him and accept him as your savior, that's Jesus, then sinful as your life may have been, for his sake, you are accounted righteous. Watch this. Christ's character stands in place of your character and you are accepted before God just as if you had not sinned. Oh, you should say hallelujah right there. Amen? But watch this. Here's the best part of this, this text, or this passage. Okay? She says, you've accepted before God as if you had not sinned. The next paragraph starts with these words, and don't miss this. Because that's enough. How many people know that's enough? Amen? Um, we, we, we are accounted righteous when we accept Jesus Christ, and his character stands in place of our character before God. How many know that's enough? Here's what she says. More than this. You mean there's more? More than this. More than just being accepted by God and Christ's character standing in our place so we, don't, we look like we have not sinned. She says more than this. Christ changes the heart. He abides in your heart by faith. You are, a, you are to maintain this connection with Christ by faith, watch this, and continual surrender to, the, to his will. And, and, and so long as you do this, watch this, he will work in you uh, to will and to do according to his good pleasure. When it says he'll work in you, he energizes you. That's what the word in the Greek means, energize. And, and so he'll work in you to, to have a desire and to do what he, his good pleasure, to bear fruit. So, so, so you may say, once he's working in you, you surrendered and you're continually surrendering, right? 
So you may say, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Somebody wants the life of faith today. Who wants that life of faith today? Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> my wife, my wife, my wife said something to me this morning. <laughs> she says, last week, you said you were tired of being a Christian. How does anybody get tired of being a Christian? I didn't say I was tired of being a Christian. Amen. What I was saying is sometimes it gets tiring being a Christian. That's what I intended to communicate. Amen. Anybody know you, you, you may know you got to do something, but you get weary sometimes. But guess what? If I keep surrendering myself by faith, amen? The life I live in the flesh, because the flesh does get tired, amen? The life I live in the flesh, if I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me, guess what he'll do? He'll work in me, both to will and to do. So for you and for me, anybody who may get weary sometimes, Amen. Anybody who gets frustrated, always having to be the one to fix the relationship and can't yell and can't fuss. Hallelujah, you can't do it. Understand something, Christ will work in you. He will give you a new energy and he'll make your heart that heart that's good soil. Are you with me? So if you're only producing 30 fold, if you stay with Christ, it'll turn to 60. Come on, somebody say amen. And if you stick with him a little longer, it'll turn to a hundredfold. Hallelujah. You stick with him a little longer, it may turn to two hundredfold. Amen? I don't know about you, man. I don't want to only hear the word. I want to be able to listen to the word. I want to be able to respond appropriately. Amen? So the life that I live in the flesh, I can live by faith in the Son of God. And not any Son of God, but the one who loved me and gave itself for me. Amen? Who here wants that to be uh, theirs, our uh, promise as well? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for allowing us to gather together this afternoon. Uh, we may have seen ourselves as we went through the Word. It's good to get a reflection of who we are. It's good to have self-examination. It's good to know if we are where we're supposed to be. I believe that there's not one of us here who wants to stay a babe in Christ. Each one of us desires to mature. Our prayer is this, that, that, that you would change our hearts and then abide in our hearts, work in us both to will and to do. Help us not to resist. Help us not to um, fall back. Help us to be determined, Lord, to press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Help us to produce fruit, some 100, some 60, some 30. And in the end, may we hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servants. That's our prayer, Lord. That's our desire. Seal our commitments, and may we see you in peace when you come. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.